Hello everyone. Replacing your pedal felts. So I need to replace my pedal felts and I thought I would take you along with me and, and show you how to do it because it's, it's not, not that hard to do. And I think it's such a useful thing to know how to do because you never know whether you're going to have access to a harp tech. And of course in this year, this, this pandemic in particular, you may not have access to a harp technician very easily. And it's just a, it's a good skill. Certainly as a professional harpist, it's a very good skill to know how to, how to replace your own pedal felts. So Pedal felts, you know, what do they do? Well, basically they're there to make sure that as the pedal moves, it's moving hopefully silently. Now, as it moves, of course, as the, as the felt rubs against the, the base, right, against the slots where it, where it slots in, it will eventually wear down and holes will start to appear. And I'll show you some of that later on because some of these are, are in fairly bad shape. And so not only will it maybe not be as silent as it used to be, but also quite, quite uh, critically, those holes will start to catch potentially as you move the pedal up and down. Uh, and certainly the potential of a pedal sticking in an inopportune moment is definitely something you don't want. In addition, as the, as the layers maybe get worn away and compressed, there is the potential that the regulation starts to not be perfect. So, in order to change that, you will need, let's see, you'll need your tuning key in order to get the bass off. You will need a set of pedal felts, which you can order from most major harp stores, harp.com, for example. Uh, this is, I believe, piano felt. It's, it's a very heavy duty felt, so you can't necessarily go and just buy any old felt, but uh, you can potentially source it yourself. You need seven of those if you're gonna replace all seven felts. You may need um, these, I don't actually know the term for them, but they're the things that go under the felts against the body of the harp, and they can get worn down as well. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with a glue gun, so you can also do it old school with a needle and thread, but glue gun is so much easier. And you will need a sharp knife, and with a glue gun it can get a little bit messy, so I've got some scrap paper. Uh, poor Chopin, but anyway, yeah. Um, so th th that's, those are the tools that we need, and uh, let, let's get at it. Today we're going to change some pedal felts. And of course, the first step is to get the harp on the ground. Now, if you have a carpeted floor, you might not need cushions, and if you have a helper, it's potentially easier. But I'm, I'm tall and reasonably strong, and so I'm just gonna kind of push this cushion up against the base of the harp a little bit, appropriate grip and let it tilt back. Shift my grip around, make sure it's coming down on that, and then onto this cushion and this cushion over here. Great, so now we're ready to ready to start changing the pedal felts. Okay, so now that the harp is on its side, and remember of course to make sure that just as when you're transporting it, that the action, that the discs are upright so that they're not pressed into the ground. So here we are, we have the, we have the base available to us and we just take our tuning key. This is, uh, all this of course applies to specifically to Lion and Healy harps. The principle will generally be the same, but again, this is specific to Lion and Healy. So this is a style 30, but will be specific to all the Lion and Healy pedal harps. So you take your tuning key and you're gonna loosen these four bolts. Now, one thing I was always told was that when you tighten them, there's no hard stop, that you could, in theory, tighten them so far that they go through the, the, the wood panel on the, on the base of the harp. So what you wanna be aware of, and I don't, I don't know how true that is, but I, I, I could see that being true, and you wanna kind of just be aware of the amount of tension and the amount of force it takes to loosen them because that's approximately how tight you want to get them on the way back as it were. So I'm going to start by loosening this and we have to loosen it so that it will come all the way out. Um, once, once you've done that initial loosen you can just do it by hand potentially. Great. I'm going to do the bottom one. Just being aware of course that the you might leave the top one for last just so that it's not all going to collapse on you unexpectedly. And you don't have to pull them out any further so then it takes to just loosen them from the 
from the point that they're within the um, within the body of the of the harp. And actually, hold on a second. Let me let me grab my phone and give you a slightly closer view of this. All right. So here, just using my phone, but I think you can see there. There's the hole, for example, that this goes in. And so we've loosened enough that it's come out. Quite a nice looking view there. That it's come out and and I don't know if you can see this one. Let me try. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's, yeah, a little hard to see on this, but again, it's got a hole that it goes in. So they're out, but they don't need to come all the way out. We don't need to pull them all the way out. We can just leave them there. That's great. And so now with this last one, I'm just going to kind of be aware of the fact that while it it is still going to be somewhat secured, it is no longer firmly attached. So I'm just supporting a little bit with my with my left hand. There we go. Okay, and so now you will have to pull it out because there are pins, sort of spikes that are still connecting it to some extent. So I'm just going to gently pull it out a little bit. There we go. And because I don't want these to just fall out, I'm going to tilt this down. And you can see it actually could do with a little bit of a vacuuming. So one thing I'd forgot to mention, of course, was when we tilt the harp, we want to make sure to have put these pedals up the, so that they're not extended, right? This one I didn't because, bother with because it's, it's fine, but these ones for sure we want to bend the pedals. Okay, so now we see the naked harp, so to speak. Here it is in its native environment. And um, there's, you know, there's all, all of this. I'm, I'm probably going to do a bit of a dusting and stuff, but for the moment I'm just concerned with replacing these pedal felts. And it's been a while since I've done that. They're, they're getting pretty bad at the moment. So I thought I would take you along with me and let's, yeah, let's get on to this next step. All right, so let's change a pedal felt. And I, I just changed both of these just to remember how to do it. It's been quite a while since I've changed one. And I, I, I've always changed my own pedal felts, but actually this last time I had some work done on the harp at, at Lion Neely in Chicago and, and they changed the pedal felts. And so I was surprised when I opened these up, cut, took these off to find that there's a rubber thing under here. So let me, let me show it to you. So first step, so we're going to do these two have been done. We're going to do this one. We're going to just take a nice sharp knife and we're going to cut through the pedal felt. And again, this is fairly thick felt. So a good sharp knife is, is good. And we'll try and cut through here. And you can always kind of reverse engineer, right? It's great to, if you can't remember which way to wrap them or something, that you can just see how it was done, currently done. Um, so there they are, there it is. And we're gonna unwrap it. And I saw, surprise, surprise, that there's this sort of rubber thing underneath. So I am accustomed to just seeing the bare metal, but instead, and I don't know if you can see this, let me, oh, maybe I'll fire up my phone. Here we are. So this, right, this is some sort of rubber. And it's interesting because I was thinking about the fact that this work was done in 2016 and I haven't changed my pedal felt since then. And I think this is a big part of it. Now, back when I was a teen, I was practicing four and a half hours every day. I changed my pedal, pedal felts, oh, felt like every year, two years or something. I don't know. It was quite, quite often. But these, as I say, have lasted such a long time. And again, I don't quite get the same chance to practice quite as much as that. But um, so you can see this, I think this is the D pedal. It's been worn through, right? We got a nice little hole there. Um, and that, of course, then starts catching on the notches of the, of the pedal, uh, of the pedal slots. So not ideal. Okay, so now we've got this, and that means we, we actually only need a, a fairly short amount of this. And this is not quite as wide as, as the ones that they put on, but should be okay. I'm going to take some masking tape. I would normally use just some clear scotch tape or whatever, but uh, I'll again kind of follow what has been done. 
And so in this case, this edge is going to try to go right with the edge of this rubber. And if, if you don't have that rubber, you would want to start just on the, uh, again, reverse engineer how it was, but on the, on the very edge, the very bottom, the very heartmost part of the pedal, and then just start wrapping the pedal felt around quite tightly. You want to wrap as tightly as you can. So we're going we're gonna to attach this, we're going to tape it on, and the tape doesn't need to be super strong. It's just there, the, the wrapping action of the, of the felt should keep it on there fairly well. Now these also looked to have been maybe glued on. There's some adhesive of some sort, but again, by wrapping around on top of itself, and this is in particular when, when you didn't have that sort of rubber there, you would do more rotations, more, there would probably be three layers, right? Because we can, you can see, we can, we can do with this length, we can do one more layer but I'm not because I'm going to match what they seem to have done, which is just two layers, and then ending it right here so that the, the final wrap around does not quite get to the bottom, but just to the side. And you can maybe kind of see that, right? I don't know that's out of, out of view, but um, you can see that on the other, other ones as well. Maybe I'll just give you, a, give you a quick look at that. Yeah, that it's just right here on the edge. Um, and not on the not on the bottom. So I, I, I wrap that fairly tightly, and then I'm going to cut that in some some fashion or another. So I'll, I'll pull that fairly tight, and I will just cut it, even though it's going to snap back because nothing is holding it. Uh, it's a little bit awkward, especially from this angle, trying not to obstruct the camera view too much, but let's uh, give it a go. See how that is. Great. Looks pretty good. So next step is the glue gun. And again, I was, I was also taught how to do it the more traditional method, I guess, before glue guns, which would be to take a needle and thread and, and, and just sew it, right? Like, but that takes a long time. And it's quite, quite annoying. So this handy glue gun is going to be great. I've just plugged it in, my sketchy looking extension cord, and it's going to warm up. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to just glue a layer here, pop the glue gun down and push this onto it. Being aware of the fact that of course it gets quite hot um, and just, just being careful. And again, I accept no <laughs> responsibility. Do this at your own risk. But uh, yeah, no, it should, should be fine. So this is just a, a standard sort of heat glue gun, right? Where you put the glue sticks in, it heats it up, and then it comes out as this hot glue. Oh, and it's, you can see, because it's still hot, it's, it's already a little bit liquid. I'm gonna just wait for a moment. So I've got, I've got some paper down here just to try to keep it somewhat unmessy. Okay, yeah, that's looking good. So I'm gonna see if I can pull this out, kind of grab this ready to go. I'm gonna put that layer approximately where I think this is gonna close, move that away, and then try and have that. Oh, and this looks, 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 looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Great. Uh, I gotta remember with this glue gun, at least you have to unplug it then. Otherwise it's just gonna keep getting hot, hot, hot. So we'll unplug that. Checking in with these. This one's maybe a little sketch, but anyway. Hopefully good enough. Okay, so now we're gonna go down to the lower ones. They're always a little bit more unwieldy, but yeah, let me adjust this camera angle. All right, so we will follow that same principle. All right, we're gonna take our knife. Okay. 
cut through here. Get a nice sharp knife. There we go. Now, noticing, of course, that these should be wrapped in the other direction. So before we were starting here, going un, um, under and around, or uh, sorry, over and around, right? Yeah, over and around. So now this is starting on this, as it were, the inside, if we think of this as the, the middle this the starting point, um, and, then, and then going around like this. So let's get this off. Great. We'll get our new pedal felt. We'll get some masking tape. Oh, sorry about that. Yikes. Um, okay. And so then, why did we say? I believe it's starting. Yeah, it's it's here, right? And it's going to be going around from the inside out. So we'll put this on here. Like that, and then. Again, wrapping it fairly tightly around and around. And again, this is where it ends, right? This upper part now. So, which is hopefully going to be a little bit easier then to trim that. Looks good. Okay, so then I've got to plug back in my glue gun. Pull these. Take a moment for this to warm up, and we'll do this one. So. It's it's a little bit fiddly, I suppose, uh, but it's not it's not that hard. Again, when you're in here, you could check to see are these feeling oily enough. This one's quite oily. Um, you can do a little bit of cleaning, right? You could just do a little bit of a, a little bit of dusting, a little bit of vacuuming, a little bit of cleaning, uh, and just checking in yeah, how, how it's looking when it's lying down. But then you will hopefully end up with new pedal felts. And let's, this is good. There we go. Now, these, as I, as I mentioned, so I have, I have some spares of those. They obviously can get com compressed over time. Uh, to be honest, I, I generally don't change them that often because this seems fine, right? Like there's, it's, if you're hearing a bunch of noise as you release the pedal up from natural to flat, then this could be the culprit. Uh, and so they're glued on, you just peel them off and then try to glue them on the same bit. It's just a little bit annoying because they it has to be fairly precise because the, then the bottom of the heart slots around that and needs to be in the right spot. So I generally try to avoid changing them if I don't need to. And these are all looking looking fine to me. Uh, they look fine. So, uh, but yeah, you just pull them off, apply some glue. And, and here you can see, right here's the Here's the four, and here's the three, so this obviously matches up. And put the appropriate one there, put some glue on the bottom, stick it on, again, trying to match that, that spot. Uh, I can't remember, you could even try to glue it with the, with the bottom on, uh, potentially, but um, yeah, that's, that's what those are. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then put it back together. All right, so I've replaced all the pedal felts, Again, it took me way longer to set up to film this than it did to actually change the pedal felts. 
So now I'm just gonna put the base back on. So if you're lucky, the petals will stay approximately where they should. You can see this one doesn't really want to. I'm gonna put a little bit past. You could have an assistant to try to hold it there. Um, and again, depending on how fierce your springs are feeling, maybe harder or easier. But if I'm lucky, I'm gonna be able to slot them approximately where they're gonna go. That's great. So I'm gonna get the base and bring that up. I vacuumed it out, ready to go. It's got all these little, little uh, spikes, right? Uh, can you see that? They are little spikes, and I know I'm not focused that well, but anyway, all these little spikes to line up with the holes on the base. So that's what we're going to try to do, as well as these petals. So if we're lucky, we'll be able to just kind of get all of these in. There they go, to a certain extent. And then kind of move it around a little bit and adjust on. Now let's see, at the moment it needs to go down more. There we go, look at that. Right spot, this needs to go up a little bit higher. So this can be a little fiddly. And again, something where potentially with a assistant, it could be a little easier. Okay, I think. We just about got that. Oh, not quite. Here we go. Okay. Great, great. Yeah, addressing this bell felt. Could have, so in this case, because these were slightly thinner, I aired towards the end of the pedal, but in this case, I think I could have aired to having the pedals wrapped a little bit lower. So. Should be okay, but anyway, something to keep in mind for next time. So that looks good. Everything's nice and snug. Pedals should be able to move. Great. Okay. And then we take our handy dandy um, tuning, tuning pin. Where are we? There we are. And I'm going to start the same way I did before. I'm going to start with the top one. And I can look down, try to find the hole, or I can just kind of move it around and hopefully get it straight and hopefully it's going in smoothly. So I'm not going to tighten this particularly tightly at all to start with. So now it's starting to get a little bit snug. That's great. I'm going to do the bottom one. Good. It's threading in nicely. Again, I'm going to kind of just get it a little bit snug. This one, which I can actually, from this angle, I can actually see where it's supposed to go. That's great. Get that one in there. Kind of snug, and this one, I'm trying to find the hole, and get that one in there, just gently snugged up. So then, again, trying to kind of remember from when I undid it, I can give this one a little bit more Tension. You don't want to have it too loose. You don't want to have the base rattling around or, or going to slip off. This one as well, I can give it a little bit more. But as I say, especially for this one, the front, I've been told, right, that there's a danger of it of it being turned too far. And, and yeah, so no need to get no need to get freaked out. Ah, ah. where are we? Ah, but just something to be aware of. So this one. Yeah, great. So again, it should be it should be solidly on, but just not, not too much. Uh, yeah, check everything else is looking okay. So there we are, ready to bring the heart back up. Again, definitely a lot easier with an assistant. 
But there we are. And hopefully these pedals should now be sliding nicely. As they seem to be. Voila! New pedal felts. What could be better? Thanks so much for watching. I hope this has proved useful. And if you're looking to replace your pedal felt, I hope this enables you to do that. I'll see you in a couple weeks time. Cheers.